Hi, this is MC Shetty for a new episode of my modding tutorial series for Forge for 1.20 Before I start the tutorial, um, I want to talk a bit about something that happened recently So, basically, uh, almost the entire Forge team, except for Lex, split off and they formed a new Forge project um, You can read more about it here. I'm not going to into the why and why and yeah and the reasons for this uh, yeah you can read all about it here. I just wanted to inform you that this project exists and that it will have an influence on what happens in the future. At this moment I recommend to stay with the version of Forge right before the split, which is 47.1.3 because from that point on both projects went a different way and there might be incompatibilities. The new Forge team is trying its best not to have any incompatibilities, but yeah, there are no guarantees. Um, yeah, so this is the site where this is announced. Um, by the way, CPV and Curl are the the main uh, leaders of the new project, and Lex is still maintaining Forge. And there's also GitHub with more information. All right. Now the tutorial itself. Um, we will start with a totally new project, N nothing from the previous tutorials, because what we this will be a multi-episode tutorial uh, where we will make a mod, a tech mod, with various uh, features, power generation, also bots that can fly around and do stuff, and so on. So some pretty interesting things. Um, but in this tutorial, it's just preparation. So we start with a basic mod like this. Um, we also have all the setup, the version of Forge and so on. Um, nothing special, that's all the same as in the previous version. Yeah, like this. Uh, it's also registration, where we have all the registers. There's one new thing that's new, because we want to register or tap our items or tab, uh, blocks into our custom tab instead of uh, just adding it to one of the existing tabs like we did before and this is this done this exactly the same as you would do for blocks items and so on there's also a deferred register for it and then you register it like this with a registry object where you set the title the icon where to place it and which items it contains. That's pretty easy. Before we continue, yeah, let's first turn on the music. Let's actually show what this mod does so that you have a better idea of what we are going to do. So the first thing is we make a power generator in Sweden. It's working because it's generating power and it can work on any burnable items. It also has a tooltip and uh, a power bar like this. So that's the first block we will make. And the other block is a charger which will consume power from the generator. And this block will not do anything at this moment it will just take the power until it's full and then do nothing with it. But this will in the future be the basis for charging so the bots that we will make will come to this to charge up so that they can continue their work. That's the basic idea. So our first block is the generator. Just exactly the same as before the previous tutorials we extend block which 
implements entity block because it has a block entity. We this is the properties for the constructor or new block entity. The ticker because we want to do something every tick only at the server side. This is to open the user interface. So we override use. We have done this before. It's exactly the same. Uh, this is a bit different. Uh, so when we place our block, we want the front of our block to be in the direction, opposite direction of where the player is looking. So that the front always faces us. So that's done here. And we also have a powered flag that's default set to false. So that's basically the block. The block entity itself, the main difference is that in, in addition to an item, so we have an item handler that supports the fuel slot, that's this one, but we also have energy, and that's done with this. So basically, we create energy storage, and we use the standard forge energy storage for this, with a capacity, and you can see the parameters, how much it can receive. Um, you don't receive anything actually, but that's okay. This is not really used, but this is the important one. And these are defined here. And in adapted, we have an... So this is the energy storage that we can manipulate internally, just like we did with items. But the capability itself, which is a lazy optional, uses an adapted energy storage, which is a very simple class that just takes another energy storage and delegates everything to it. It doesn't do anything else. And the reason for that is that you can then um, have an unrestricted energy storage at the base, and here you restrict. So you notice that for the power generator, we don't allow receiving energy, we don't allow extracting energy, we cannot extract energy from this, and we cannot receive energy from this. There is a reason for this, these restrictions. In uh, Forge Energy, is a push system. So that basically means that energy is always pushed from a generator or from a power cell or from, or from a cable to adjacent blocks. You never extract energy out of a block. That's something you don't do. In the exact energy is actually something you probably should almost never uh, implement. So. Remember this, it's very important. Forge Energy is a push system. Okay. We have a variable for the burn time. That's how long we will be generating power out of the last element item that we consumed. So, in our tick, we have two things that we do. First, we generate energy, and then we distribute energy. So, generate energy will do nothing if we are at maximum energy already. If burn time is equal or less than zero, we have no item, we are not doing anything, so we check if there's an item in our slot. If it's empty, we have not. Otherwise, we set the burn time, and this is some a method that you can use from Forge itself, uh, to get how long it will this specific item will burn. For example, a lava bucket will burn much longer than a piece of coal. And if it's uh, zero or less, it's not the fuel, so we don't do anything. Otherwise, we extract the item, and burn time will then be set. And we also call set changed to make sure our block entity is saved. If we were already burning, we decrease the burn time, and we receive this amount of energy every tick. So that means a power generator will generate 50 power per tick. Alright. 
uh, this is set burn time if it's equal it doesn't do anything otherwise we possibly change the powered property so that the front of our generator changes its appearance okay okay the second thing that we do is if we have energy we distribute it to our neighbors so we go over all their all, all six sides this is a class from vanilla if there's no energy left we should simply stop otherwise we check if the adjacent block supports energy and if it can receive energy and then we try to receive as much energy as we have uh, ourselves and maximum tr transfer and we we get how much was actually uh, received by that block and then we actually ac remove that energy from our own energy because that changed and so on and then we return zero here because we are, we are in a lambda as it were but we don't use ac actually use the result uh, yeah this is to get the items we save both energy and items and we also load them make sure to use tag get compound for items but tag get for energy this is our item handler same as before energy handler we just covered that and here is get capability where we support our item handler or energy handler or something else our generator also has a container for the user interface remember that container is the client and server side version of a user interface it's what makes the communication between the client and server work and basically we add slots like we did in previous tutorial uh, yeah that's this and also the player inventory slot but we also add two data slots because remember we showed the current amount of energy in the user interface to do that we need to communicate uh, synchronize from the server the energy that's in our block and this is done with data slots a data slot is an integer but remember that it's only 16 bits and our power is potentially 32 bits so that's why we have to split it so here we we do the least significant 16 bits and here's the most significant 16 bits and we store the power here in our container so we get it from the generator this is called server side always this will be called client side and that's how we can get the power on the client and the container will make sure that whenever the power changes this is sent to the client the rest is the same as before nothing changed here yeah that's all the same finally we have user interface which is all already it's just the same again yeah okay i had to update forgot something okay so it's the same so we have this is uh, this defines the position of our energy bar when we override render background and this is to render the power bar so we do a fill gradient until this capacity you see how we get the power from our container here and we know the max capacity and how wide in pixels the energy bar is and then we can use fill gradient to make uh, where the power is and we fill the rest with uh, a dark uh, board, uh, dark square in render we also handle the tooltip so if the mouse is in the bar we get the power and we render tool, the tooltip like this of course screen has to be registered as you done same as, as before and you also know from previous versions that you need all these registry objects to get the, this to work
so that's pretty standard then there's the charger which is the slab block that consumes the power because it's a slab we use another shape we have a block entity a ticker as well which doesn't do much at the moment just powered falls yeah this block that's all standard stuff the charger itself it has no items just energy storage also with an adapted energy story and this, this one can receive power and we have to override this to call set changed and receive energy in tick server we check the state if we have power and if so we set power to true otherwise we set power to false we save our energy create and get capability this is all very basic stuff in the future this tick server will do a lot more of course all right then data generation is all the same i'm not going to go over it you can see that in the previous tutorial but for the block state there are a few things so we have to do uh, the block state for the generator so we have two models the model for when the generator is generating power and the model for when it's not generating power let's look at the textures that are referenced here so, so that's when the power generator is off and this is when it's uh, no that's a charge sorry this is when the generator is off and this is when it's on that's actually an overlay and it because it's shaped like that this it's animated like this and basically we use this uh, we have direction block and direction block iterates over all the states and we could it will call this method to get the model and, and the model depends on the state of power either it's model on or it's model off okay yeah i just did a small improvement to the texture uh, so that it it will work uh, it will work better now it contains also the background anyway so basically in order for a generator we have the two models we call the reaction block which takes a by consumer to generate the model based on the state and for every state we iterate over it and we rotate rotate based on the facing property so that's for the generator so we we have this will essentially make 12 uh, variants because we have two states for powered and six for the direction the charger for the charger we use a slap model so models dot slap and we use the standard get variant builder um, which we also use by the way in our direction block and we just have two states powered or not powered that's very easy and here's how we do the rotation by the way for the generator um, there are a few other things in this mod for example i already added a network channel but it's not used yet that's for the future um, yeah there are a few things that are from previous tutorial that i kept uh, because we will need them later on but that's basically it so this is just preparation for a bigger tutorial uh, and but it explains power and some other things synchronization of data through the container so i hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions please let me know bye bye